Hey, welcome back. Eric Arnold here in my little classroom. Uh, we call the Sports Barn. Here to give another lesson on MLB and who is going to win the NCAA Men's Basketball Tournament. Uh, today is the 14th of March, uh, probably about late afternoon. So let's go ahead, let's get to it. Uh, MLB, uh, you know, I was so excited that we're getting a 162 game season with real rules. And, you know, now within a week, it looks like those real rules have gone poof as the owners are negotiating with the players, and it looks like it's going to happen, to bring back the ghost runners, which, uh, what's that mean? That's the guy that falls out of the sky uh, onto second base with nobody out to start every extra inning. Uh, it's an artificial way to shorten the games. Uh, just, I'm a purist. I hate it. I, I just don't... Can't we just have real baseball? But, you know, they, they, the game's dying, so I guess they're trying to f make it more popular. Uh, I would argue that they're taking something that's a feature in uh, baseball and calling it a bug. It's the sport without a clock. It's the sport where things can just go on and on until... One team defeats the other team. There's no clock. That's the only sport where it's like that. But they say that's not a feature, that's a bug. One of my favorite memories of baseball uh, that I've ever been to as far as a game goes was, I'm going to say 2010 possibly, uh, the Phillies defeated the Cincinnati Reds in 19 innings. It was 3 in the morning. I stayed for the whole game. And the Phillies won the game because... They ran out of pitchers and had to pitch a middle infielder, a backup middle infielder by the name of Wilson Valdez in a tie game. And he did it. This guy got out the great Joey Votto. I think he got out Jay Bruce too. Scoreless, through a scoreless frame. Philly scored in the bottom half of the inning and won. And that's a game I'll never forget. It's a unique experience that you can only find at a baseball stadium. Uh, uh, you know, I'm basically going to start talking about that in the past tense because it sounds like these ghost runners are now going to become the thing that's going to be accepted forever, except in the playoffs, of course. Then, I guess, the owners figure, well, uh, we can have real baseball in the playoffs. It's like, oh, my God, couldn't we just have real baseball all the time? But whatever, they didn't ask me, so I'm, you know, along for the ride, and I just have to eat it and uh, like it. So, so there's that. But let's get to the NCAA champion. That's what you really want to hear. Who's going to be at the top of the bracket in the sports barn? Now, look, there's, I think, at least three historical trends that I find pretty compelling so we're trying to find a team that fits all three of these trends. Um, one is talent. Uh, someone wrote an article, and I don't know who, so I can't accredit it. I, it was a good one. It was basically the point of the article, and you can probably find it online just by looking up, why doesn't the Big Ten ever win? <laughs> that was the point of the whole article. And they said talent. Those teams have no talent. They, they, they never put team uh, the players in the uh, NBA compared to the other conferences from the Big Ten. The Big Ten hasn't had a champion since Michigan State, I believe, in 2000. So that's over 20 years. So the Big Ten always has, what, eight, nine, ten teams in there. And they all get wiped out, uh, which leads to, kind of makes you wonder what they're doing there to begin with. But... You know, that's a discussion for another time. So, talent. Uh, another one of these factors is a recent tragedy or loss to fuel that team. Uh, for example, um, 2018, Virginia 
I believe uh, the I know they were number one seed. They may have been the number one seed in the whole damn tournament. Uh, they were highly, highly ranked. That was one of those uh, uh, Bennett teams that plays suffocating defense, rarely gives up 60 points. Usually these games are in the 50s. Uh, Might have been the number one team in the whole country. Lose in the very first round to Baltimore County. Never happened before or since. They were the first number one seed to lose in the first round to a 16 seed. Well, they won the whole thing next year. They won the whole thing the next year. They didn't stay a joke for long. So you're looking for that kind of loss in the previous season, perhaps, to fuel a team. Uh, It's a well-accepted adage that most successful people, teams, what have you, you learn from failure. You can learn from failure. Very few people just succeed, you know, a straight line right up the chart. Boom! And nothing ever goes wrong for them. Uh, Usually there's missteps in life, and you got to learn to deal with it. And if you, uh, a misstep is not the end of the world. In fact, it's often an opportunity to springboard forward if you learn from your mistakes. So that's what you're looking for there, a team with a recent tragedy. And then third, they got to be good. Uh, most of these teams, that, uh, you know, there's exception to every rule, but most of these teams are chalk. Most of these winning teams that win the title are pretty high in the Ken Pomeroy f- rankings. They're somewhere in that top five, generally speaking. Uh, now, of course, your exceptions to that, you know, you had two UConn teams that came out of the clouds in the past 10, 15 years. That's inexplicable. Uh, your Villanova in the mid 80s, inexplicable. Uh, your NC State in the mid 80s, inexplicable. Uh, you have that occasional super upset. Uh, but for the most part, as much as we romanticize that of those events, they're not they're not frequent. <laughs> they only seem frequent because those are the documentaries we we watch over and over and over and over again on the TV. We don't watch the documentary about Duke winning it uh, in whatever because one, it's boring and we hate Duke, and two, you know these things happen pretty much all the time that the chalk wins. So. Those three items. So let, let, let's go through them here. Who meets, who can get through this gauntlet of categories, of criteria? You know, teams with talent. So what I did there was I found somebody's list that had 100 NBA prospects. Who's the top 100 NBA prospects? And I just matched it up to teams. You know, okay, this team has one. This team has one. Oh, now this team has two what have you. So anyone that had two or less top 100 NBA prospects, I threw them out. Believe it or not, some of these teams have four and five NBA prospects on their teams. Uh, I think Duke has like five. It makes you wonder how they ever lose, but uh, they do. So teams that that cannot win, uh, pretty much Everybody except Purdue in the Big Ten, they're out. Uh, let's see, Notre Dame, uh, Virginia Tech, Texas Tech, Iowa State, Texas, Houston, San Francisco, LSU, Tennessee, Kansas, a number one seed, Kansas, uh, Memphis, UConn, Villanova, and Seton Hall. So toss all them in the bin. They're just not talented enough. Uh, now, recent tragedy. This one holds pretty strongly. Unfortunately, it doesn't eliminate a lot of teams. Uh, In other words, everybody lost last year except one team, uh, and that's Baylor. So we're going to toss them away. You know, just in that it's a lot harder, I think, to repeat than it is to win it the first time. And they don't have that, that fuel burning in them that is uh, pushing them forward. Uh, another team we're going to toss away because they don't meet the 
tragedy, the recent loss uh, criteria is Kentucky. Toss them. Why? Well, Kentucky lost last year, and they lost, and they lost some more. That, that doesn't, I don't think that meets my criteria. In other words, I'm looking for that one event, a team that was pretty good to very good, possibly really good, that had that one night, one game, that one event where they just didn't have it. They just weren't ready, and they got beat, and now they're coming back going, damn it. Son of a bitch, you know, where they've got the score written on the locker room everywhere. It's on the rugs. It's on the walls where everybody stares at that all freaking season to tell them, we're not letting that happen again. Well, Kentucky was below 500. They were just bad. It wasn't that they had one bad outing. They had a whole season of bad outings. They were terrible. I mean, what is, what is, what is Calipari going to do? Just write down all over the walls in the, his locker room the whole season scores? He, he'll have uh, the whole, uh, the walls will be wallpapered with scores and they're all losing. So I, I don't think that works. Uh, it, that when you're just bad the previous season, yeah, I mean, I guess that fuels you somewhat. Uh, I'm, I think it's more along the lines of, you know, uh, you know, I'm thinking of the 76 uh, Bobby Knight team. Uh, they were perfect, right? So, and, and he was a young coach back in 76, the last perfect team. Uh, so where was his recent failure? Well, believe it or not, he had almost the exact same team in 75, and he lost. He shouldn't have lost. He should have gone back to back with that great team he had, and he didn't. He stepped on his dick in, I'm going to say, the regional final. Stepped on his dick to a team he didn't respect, a coach he did not like and did not respect, Joe B. Hall and the Kentucky Wildcats. And that fueled that great Indiana team to go perfect the next year because Knight was so angered that he lost a guy he didn't respect. So uh, that would be his recent tragedy. Uh, his team was good, though. It was not bad, like Calipari's team was last year. Their team was bad. So that's where I'm tossing out Kentucky and Baylor there. So what's left then? Well, let's see. We got Gonzaga, their recent tragedy. Their number one team in all the rankings, in the Ken Palm rankings, their recent tragedy would have been getting beat by Baylor. Uh, Arizona, their recent tragedy would be being on probation last year, and they missed the whole tournament. Uh, UCLA lost in the uh, semifinals on a miracle shot by Gonzaga. That's their recent tragedy. Auburn, I don't know what their recent tragedy is. They're still in it. They got enough talent to be in it. Duke, they have enough talent to be in it. Um, they, but they were just bad last year, too. They were bad last year, too. So... I think we're tossing Duke on that category. Plus, these teams I'm saying towards the bottom there, UCLA, Auburn, Duke, they're just not good enough as far as the Ken Pomeroy rankings. So we're tossing them out. We're tossing them out. That basically leaves us with Gonzaga and Arizona. And we don't think we're getting any value with Gonzaga. They're the favorite. They're about 3-1, to one, my bookie says. That's not enough. Not enough in by half. I don't think they're any better than Arizona. In fact, I think Arizona's just simply better than Gonzaga. Uh, Gonzaga, I believe, suffers by what conference they're in. They just do. They don't play the level of competition uh, for 10 weeks leading up to the big dance. They just play no competition. I don't, uh, to me, it'd be like the Yankees playing at A-ball for 10 weeks, and they're at A-ball. And then all of a sudden, now they're going to face the Red Sox and Chris Sale's pitching. It's like, shit, nobody pitches like Chris Sale at A-ball. We're not ready for this. To me, it's the same thing with uh, Gonzaga. They're just not ready for that highest level of competition in the West Coast Conference that they play in. Uh, I thought that was as obvious as obvious could be 
in last year's championship game against Baylor. Baylor didn't just get hot. Gonzaga didn't just have an off night. Baylor crushed those guys because they were better. They were just better. It wasn't close. So to be paying this outrageous price on Gonzaga, there's no value there, none at all. That's where I'm with Arizona. I'm down with Arizona. That's what's left. Those guys on Arizona, as far as the talent goes, a lot of these guys are in the top 20 of NBA prospects that are probably they're going to have two guys go in the uh, first round, at least two guys. So there's your talent. Uh, your recent tragedy, well, they were on probation last year or had some kind of sanctions against them. Sean Miller took the fall. Uh, a lot of these players, though, are not freshmen. Uh, they all were on, the talented guys were on the team last year. So you have these guys as a unit that are like, you know what, we were good enough last year to play with the other teams, and they wouldn't let us play. So now we've come back as a unit. They didn't all go over to the NBA. They all came back as a unit. So to me, that means they want to win. There's a reason they all came back, and I don't think it's because they weren't good enough to make the NBA. I think they came back for a reason. So here they are as a unit with two years of experience under their belt. You know, you got NBA talent with two years of experience under their belt. That's in today's college basketball world, not that common. Usually NBA talent, you get it for one year and one and done. Well, here we got some NBA talent that's got two years. I mean, this is almost Villanova-esque. Villanova, uh, that's their model, where they get this sneaky NBA talent that nobody seems to know is there, and that gets two, three years of experience. So uh, I think that is incredibly valuable. A little nervous about the rookie coach, uh, Tommy Lloyd, uh, but he's done nothing but win. Guy's done nothing but win. He's in the, the coach of the year discussions everywhere. Uh, he, he's a few, Mark Few disciple. So, uh, well, yeah, let's put it this way. If he gets up against Gonzaga, he knows that team. <laughs> so that, I don't see how that can do anything but be an advantage. Uh, and he's 6-1 to one compared to 3-1 to one with Gonzaga. So... For all these reasons, that's where we're looking at Arizona. I think that's the play. We're going to go with that. Going to go ahead with that. We say Arizona's the champion. So, hey, good. That's what we got for you here in the sports barn. Uh, baseball, around the corner. Uh, we'll probably have a handful of preview videos on the uh, up upcoming MLB season. Uh, we're meeting with Pittsburgh Louie soon to see if we can uh, incorporate him uh, again, into our baseball videos. He was a winner last year. I was a winner last year. I still say, what channel out there has two winning handicappers in baseball? Uh, uh, put it in the comments section, because I want to tell those guys, whatever uh, channel that is. So we're hoping to replicate our success from last year. Hoping really, uh, you know, hoping hard. <laughs> so good. Good, good, good. Um, hey, this is a good time of year for sports. So let's have it. Let's get at it. I'm Eric Arnold. I believe in free speech. Hit the like button. We'll talk again.